what's your general thinking on that team selection? I suppose Will Connors, Hugo Keenan in there, and also what's the latest on uh, Dan Levy, James Ryan, and uh, Tyke Furlong? Um, well, the selection piece first. Um, yeah, I think those guys have done well. Uh, you know, and if you look back before we, we broke up and um, before the lockdown began, um, yeah, like Will had some outstanding performances for us, and, and similar to with Hugo as well. So, um, I thought the two of them backed up well against Ulster last week. So, um, yeah, they deserve their chances. Um, and like, there's some very, very tight calls all across the board. So, um, not much in the selections. Joshua and the Flyers are very unlucky to uh, to miss out, um, and a couple of other guys are unlucky to miss out as well. All across the the team. So, um, you know, we. Did, some of the coaches took a session with some players there this morning uh, that aren't involved in the game. And, you know, there's lots of very good players that have missed out. So, um, yeah, you're just trying to get that balance in terms of rewarding guys um, that have put their hand up, A, in training, um, obviously B, the previous form before we did break up. And, um, you know, we're, we're trying to make assessments on, on the two games we've seen so far. So, um, in terms of the guys that are, you mentioned the three, Who've been out yet? Again, they're all they're all close. They're all close to getting back involved. Um, just a little bit too soon. Whether they come back in next week, but again, we're we're trying to make assessments all the time. So you could, in theory, take a bit of a chance with one of them. But um, ultimately, anyway, they're they're not quite right yet. So, um, but that that's some right selection as well. Is 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 part of that um, dilemma for us. So you're trying to weigh up all the factors. Um, but yeah, no, hopefully they'll be, they're not many miles away from being involved, um, which would be good. Which one okay. of the three, which one of the three would be, would be the closest, do you reckon, to returning? <laughs> I don't know, it's a good question. Um, I'd say probably James, I'd say is probably the closest at this stage, I, I, from what I saw today. Um, what does your recent record with um, Munster, what does it mean to you, I suppose, including winning the last two Pro 14 semi-finals? What does it stand for and does it give you that psychological edge? Uh, it meant a lot of the time when we won those games. It doesn't mean anything now. Uh, absolutely nothing is what it means. Um, and it's important people understand that because it's um, you know two different sets of players, completely different environments. We're playing in an empty Aviva. Um, last time we played Monster was in a packed London Park. Um, time for that was in a packed RDS. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to remember what the time before that was, was in a Thelma or the Aviva, all of which were pretty much packed houses anyway. Um, so, big difference is, is this borders is the biggest difference. Um, but the teams are very, very different as well. So, um, yeah, it's I don't think it's a, of any real importance. You know, certainly not for us anyway. I'm not sure what what goes through most of the players' minds, but um, you know, it's, a, it's a new challenge for them as well. So, um, yeah, it's a, this is a one-off game, it's semi-final. You lose, you're out. Like, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Um, so, what's the more, most important piece is doing enough to get over the line to get you into the next round, which is the final next week um, against Edinburgh Ulster. So, um, yeah, like, it's, it's hugely exciting, like, in terms of, like, it's such a big game straight away. Um, it's going to be strange, you know, you get to this stadium, it's very much the same as it was two weeks ago, and for a number of years, obviously been to the Aviva as well, so you, you've already got a sense as to what that's like. Um, it's different to what we expect for knockout rugby games, but, you know, as in, it's 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 positive the fact that we're actually playing the game, and, you know, it's important not to lose sight of that as well, um, because of all, as, as we talked about in the past, the work that's gone into getting us to this point, and um, obviously there's... Lots of sections of society have have uh, suffered far greater than we have. So um, yes, yeah, so usually we're to get to that point, but you know we're all dying to have supporter back in the ground because you know for both teams, um, you know we're we're very mm. blessed with the fact that we're very well supported teams, both Leinster and Munster, and hence these games take on a whole sort of separate meaning, I guess, um, because of what the supporters bring, uh, which is important to acknowledge. Uh, Leo Dunn's worked here. Does it feel like a home semi final? And what, what are the advantages for you, for you there? Um, the advantage is we don't have to sit in the bus for very long to get to the ground, I guess. Um, that's probably the biggest advantage. But uh, I mean, yeah, certain familiarity, I guess, for our guys. Um, you know, the first week we were down in the Aviva, we were in the home dressing rooms. Last week we were also in the home dressing room, we were in the away dressing room. So 
um, that was a bit of a new experience for, for some of our guys in the away dressing room. Um, I think we're back in the home dressing room this week. So, like, what an act, like, it's it's the pitch and all yeah. the players have had, had a couple of games there. Once we've played their two games, you know, we've played two games. So, in, in theory, it's it's quite even. Um, do, do, you reckon those things, do, you, do you reckon those things count, like being in the, the home dressing room, so to speak? Um, well, that really didn't matter for us last week because we were out to win the away <laughs> as well. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't get too bogged down by issues like that. So we just got to get on playing the game and wherever that game is. Yeah. Well, what's your um, what's your assessment of Munster since their restart? Obviously, you had you had your game against them on the, on the opening weekend. Then, obviously, uh, at the weekend, they, they ran up a, a big score against Connacht, albeit they had uh, Connacht had been given two red cards in that game. But what's your what's your overall assessment of them? Um. Yeah, like they're they're clearly put a bit more width on the on the ball in in with their attack um, and dealing. They you know, plenty of we had plenty of commentary about him um, when we obviously this time two weeks ago um, leading into that first outing. Um, and Jay yeah, he's, he's quality football for sure. Um, Chris Farrell is obviously a big physical player as well, um, and they have some played some dangerous backs. Um, probably the big thing as well, and it's you know it's, it's well documented. Rugby starting in New Zealand and in Australia, you know, in terms of the interpretation around the rook is, is the big thing. And you can see Munster's approach, I guess, um, to the rook, um, where you know you see early in the Ghana game where you know they've probably three poachers all at the same time um, over Tiernan and O'Halloran, and like you know that's that's the big issue of the game. And you know, for the referees, because there's a bit more onus, I guess, on the attacking team from looking at side entries and. You know, that extra roll on the ground, so very hard for referee to see it all. So, can you see the tackler and tackler assist no release, and can you see um, a riding player is not supporting their body weight going for poaches? So, you know, but Munster, you know, definitely you saw them at the weekend. There, they'll push the boundaries. Um, obviously, Ty Burns' yellow card is a, is a good indicator of their approach, where he's off his feet playing the ball and gets yellow card by the referee. Um, but there was a number of probably breakdowns in the first half, and you know the, the challenge I think for a team playing against that against that type of team is not to get too frustrated, um, because Connor clearly did get frustrated and had two players sent off. We'll see they did yellow card themselves as well for a player going off their feet. So um, that's the big thing, like is um, for the players to be able to understand how that's being refereed on the day, um, because it's slightly different to probably. The approach from before we were put on lockdown, I guess. So the rook has, as is always the case, is going to have a, a massive bearing um, on the outcome of the game. I think. Um, and then, like, is that sort of the, the disciplinary of something that you've been, I don't know, kind of talk to, or, you know, the referees department about? Like, there was, I think, it was what thirty-five odd penalties in that monster game alone, and sort of the penalty count has sort of been, you know, tends to be quite high in in, in the games to read that. Yeah, well, in their game, they had 26 penalties in the first half and five cards, two of which were red. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty chaotic game and it's not a great spectacle, obviously, for, for the neutrals. Um, so, but we need to understand if, if it is that type of game, how do we come out on top of some of those decisions? Um, so, it's making sure the players are very clear on the pictures that they're going to face um, and how we actually deal with it. So, um, not to get too frustrated. Very briefly, just on um, Dev Toner starting in the second row with Scott and Ryan going to the bench. What, what's the thing in there, Leo? Um, it's a big game, yeah. So I think the experience that those guys give, you know, Dev and, and Scott, uh, I think Ryan will give us really good impact as well, uh, whenever that is off the bench, um, particularly as the game starts to break up a little bit. Um, I thought Dev, yeah, ran the line out well, you know, probably well documented. We didn't have a fantastic outing at the line out um, and he's you know he's the most experienced caller that we have in the group so um, and as I thought to have, I thought he went well against Ulster at the weekend which is good to see um, and Scott gives good leadership and energy and like it's you know to as I said like we're into the finals piece now um, very very quickly so you know it's it's and again it's a very close call Ryan's unlucky uh, to miss it out there because you know, we, we discussed about possibly him starting and you know and doing things slightly differently, but obviously this is what we've got for um but we'll wait and see if we've got the balance right or not. Um but you know we're 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 lucky with this, some of the options that we have there. 
um, you know, devs, tunnel experience. You know, the line out again, like just making sure we get some of that quality launch. Um, hopefully it gives us that bit of security. Helps when you're six foot 11, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, Scott's like, he's a competitor for us, you know, so um, he's been good in some of those big days over the last number of years. So um, hopefully we'll get some of his competitive instincts to the fore as well, which would be good.